Hey folks, it's Tom, your Frugal Prepper. I'm just gonna kinda go over some things I've been doing on the automotive electrical diagnos diagnosis and repairs. And um, as I'm doing more and more of them, I just have to kinda keep building out my kit of stuff. But I am frugal, I don't like to spend a whole bunch of money. So here's what I do. Uh, first, I wanna go over these. So I've started building these. And so when you have a, a wire that you need to probe into, um, you can use this. And so you don't wanna stick a big old probe down in a wire and spread those terminals out, but it needs to be the right size, not too small, because then it makes intermittent contact. So these will actually allow you to probe onto those. These are from a GM ABS sensor. Um, let me look here and see what I did with my toolkit. This is a, let me open this one handed. <laughs> this is a kit that has all kinds of uh, tools in it to release the connectors, to release the little pins from the connector. So like I a lot of times have to probe uh, ABS sensors to see if they have voltage, a bias voltage to see if that wiring's open, and also probe onto the wheel speed sensor itself, spin the wheel, look at it on the scope, make sure it's working right. So uh, I just went to the junkyard, cut off an ABS sensor connector from a car they're getting ready to crush, and then um, took these pins out, soldered them up, and made these. Now you can buy this uh, a whole kit of these kinds of things from AES Wave and other places. The problem is they use really cheap junky wires and really cheap banana clips. They're just not really good and their their connectors, their ends aren't as good as the factory ones. So um, from Joe's Auto Electric, I'll put a video up to his channel where he makes test leads. He uses these. I'll put a link to these down below too. But these are stackable banana clips. So you can be like, okay, I need to put that in there and test it. And then I also need to hook up my probe to it. Or you can stack multiples together. Let me get it out of there. Oh crap, oh crap. <laughs> well, so you could, you could stack this one in there, right? And then Say I come down to the other end of this longer wire, right? And I wanna stack another one in there, right? So these allow you to just stack them any old way your heart desires and hook things together without having to deal with, you know, alligator clips, which I, I still use alligator clips, don't get me wrong. I got a whole selection of them over here, but this gets you a lot of stuff to be able to hook up to be able to extend that cable so I made these longer cables with it and this is the really high quality silicone wire this won't even melt if you hit it with the soldering iron this is a high temperature really good wire um, and these connectors work good so as I come across things I need to test I just go to the junkyard cut one of those connectors off make me up a set of adapters for the next time that I need to go and do it. And then I'm all set. Um, so that's good. And then of course I made up these longer wires. I put these alligator clip things on them so I can can alligator clip where I can pull it off and use it. And that works really, really well. This kit's really cheap. I'll put a link to it below. Those work really well. The other good thing is when you do this, you learn which tool you need to use and how to release those from the connector. So when you need to repair a connector, you now know kind of how it comes apart. You're not sitting there screwing with it for an hour. Um, also, most of your wire piercing probes have a banana jack connection and you can just plug that right in there too. So that works really well. Um, the um, other thing is, is I use this soldering iron as my primary soldering iron. 
this is a pine sill v2 now i used to have a pine sill v1 and i killed it because i plugged it into a 24 volt power source and they could only run off of 20. so it blew it up but now i have the pine cell v2 which runs off of 24 volts as well this is a really nice iron goes up 450 degrees um, it has things like where it detects motion so if it's just sitting there it'll idle itself down and then you pick it up and wiggle it and it wakes up and gets really hot again and it heats up really fast heats really good um, it's good for doing bigger wires smaller wires anything um, and it maintains its temperature gives you a display on the screen and it's not that expensive it's like 25 or 30 bucks then I got this uh, cable from them and this is a really high quality USB high power cable um, it's silicone so it doesn't melt if you touch it to the tip accidentally and then I run it off of this 65 watt battery pack. I'll put a link to one of these below. They don't make this particular one, but I do have another one that I use that works good. I just don't have it out here right now. And I'll put a link to that down below. Um, that works good. I always keep some solder. Keep a little solder stand here um, that I can flip up and just set my iron on so it doesn't burn anything when I'm working with it. I use this MG Chemicals uh, No Clean Flux when I need some flux. Um, and that all works out really, really well. Um, heat shrink. Now, a lot of people use the marine grade heat shrink. I do not. I do not. Um, and when I'm, when I'm working up in, in a passenger compartment or somewhere where it's not going to get wet or whatever, I don't even worry about sealing these. But when I'm underneath of a car... I spread a little bit of clear nail polish along the wire, just a little bit, slide the heat shrink up over that, heat shrink it down, the clear nail polish will seal that up, make it nice and watertight so it doesn't corrode. Um, I also get, you know, I just use the cheap Harbor Freight heat shrink, it works well. Um, and also, I use this whenever I do a wire piercing, I will just put a dab of that on there to seal up the hole. Because over time, that hole can let water and salt in there, and it'll get corroded and turn into green pus and break. Um, I run into that a lot on wires that have been back probed. Or not back probed, but pierced. And you, you can tell it's been pierced and somebody didn't seal it right. And five years later, it's bad, and you got to go find it. So I always believe in sealing those up. But that's just some of the stuff that I do for these wiring repairs. This. You know, there's a Milwaukee iron that I see a lot of guys using. It's a great big giant thing. That, and it has a ceramic tip on it that breaks really easy. It's a piece of crap. It's huge. This is really tiny and it's really high temperature. And I can fit it up in those really weird places where I need to get some solder on a wire. It's really tiny. It works really well. It's portable with the battery. It'll run on this battery for hours. You know and it works really well so i really like that soldering iron i do keep a 120 volt plug-in one as a backup just in case that goes down or something um i do keep an extra tip here for it but you know they're they're really really inexpensive and they work really really well and you can customize the firmware on it make it do all different kinds of things it's programmable on the computer and all that too I don't I don't worry about that I just use whatever came with it but uh, yeah that's it um, so let me know what you think uh, about this uh, do you think I'm crazy for building these and not just buying the AES wave kit maybe but I find that those are better connectors better ends uh, they work better and I have time once in a while to just go Clip that connector off on a car that's getting ready to be junked and build me a test harness. So that's what I do. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. It's Tom, Frugal Forever.